great-great-grandfather who was handed down. So these shears are really, they're really precious. I am the Navajo grandmother. I want to welcome you to my home and I'm going to introduce myself in Navajo in my clan ship uh, in Navajo as well. I am my mother's clan which is Towering House and my father whom I born for is red in the running water. I am a Native American genealogy researcher and through that many of my clients have called and have borne their hearts to up to me and basically saying that they don't know anything about their grandparents and they're all deceased. If not, they're so old that they can't remember. Uh, their their lives and so many people come and say who am I where did I come from and why am I here and those are the questions that befall all of us in later in life or a lot of the young students come to me and so with that I started thinking of my children and my life and we're not going to live forever and there's so much about aspects of my life that I want to share with my own children, my grandchildren, with my posterity, so that they're not caught later on in life saying, who, who am I? Where did I come from? When I was 18 months old, I was taken to my grandfather and my grandmother's house because my mother was very, very sick. And because of that, my grandfather and my grandmother, my paternal grandfather, uh, basically they raised me till I was about eight years old. And the everyday culture of home that I remember and that I want to share, um, I have some artifacts to my right. And in the morning, the early mornings, uh, just for instance, my grandfather always woke up and he would always have the Qadadin, that every day was started with prayer. And Grandpa would start right before the sun would come up, and, and he would pray, and he would pray to the east, to the south, to the west, to the north. And then he would pray for my grandmother and his posterity and myself, and then we would all, he, we would all partake of the, the Qadadin, which is the corn pollen. And that was the beautiful start of the day uh, with Grandpa's blessing. And throughout the day, uh, the normal life, uh, there was a lot of sheep herding in the reservation. And because of that, I was a sheep herder as I grew up with my grandmother. And back there in the reservation, uh, you're out in the sun. So this is a red rock. And this is what they put with the animal grease and they put it on your face. I call it the Navajo suntan lotion. And you walk around with a red face all day, but you never get uh, sunburnt. And uh, during the day when we would come home or the afternoon, Grandma would want to clean the air. And so she would burn uh, basically the juniper, uh, and, or the cedar, and and that was another cleansing that we would go through, and it was just beautiful aroma, and it would clean the air. Um, throughout the day, uh, sometimes uh, my grandmother was busy, and what she would do, uh, she would, we would have uh, sheep shearing in this in the springtime, and we would go out there. And we actually used the scissors, you know, these hand manually. We would shear the sheep, and I'd help, help shear the sheep with Grandpa and Grandma. And we would get the wool, and Grandma would basically 
card the wool, you know, basically brush the wool, and um, then after she would card it, she made, uh, you know, into these, and, and, and she would card these, and then she would basically uh, spin the wool, and with that yarn, she would go in, she would make, uh, uh, like for instance, the different type of rugs. And this was our life. Um, we didn't have brushes and hair brushes and things like that. This is the only hairbrush that I knew throughout my life as a child. Um, and this is like the loom. My grandmother always made the loom and set it up herself. And daily, every day, she was either dyeing, uh, you know, using different dyes uh, with rocks, plants, and she would have a big tub of water over the fire, and we would dye the wool in different colors so that they would, again, would turn into a beautiful rug. And then um, family sitting on the floor, just a dirt floor in the Hogan, Grandma would prepare the food there, and we would have fry bread or nanais kadi, which is the Navajo, Navajo tortillas, and with potatoes, a squash, um, chili, uh, whatever Grandpa grew in, in his little farm. And then we traded, and we would also uh, basically trade with the uh, Pueblos, and we would have their type of oven breads. And, and dip their red chilies and just wonderful food. Uh, corn, uh, you know, we, my grandmother used to use the matata and she would grind that corn. And those are the type of flour that they used until basically later on when the military started giving rations to the Native Americans and flour came about. So there's many aspects of my life that I want my children to know, uh, now in this century, many of the Navajos uh, have come off the reservation because there's very little work there. And so uh, you've, heard, you've heard of suburban Indians or city Indians, and they co they've come among the white people, and, and we've learned many other cultures, aspects of culture, but in order to retain all of this our, our Navajo culture, we need to speak and make record and so that later on in life, our children and our grandchildren aren't wondering, who am I and where did I come from? Those are questions that are so important to be answered. And many people from all over the world call me as a genealogy, Native American genealogy researcher. And a lot of them weep they shed tears because they want to know and feel that feeling of family and that they belong. And this is important for my children and my posterity, that they belong to the Navajo culture. And there are different aspects of, and different facets of being a Navajo. I will share different aspects of that with you in the coming days, in the weeks, and so that you can know how, what kind of foods we ate um, and how it was prepared. Uh, why well, might end up doing some of the carding and the spinning and show you uh, basically uh, the start and the finish of that. Uh, it's wonderful to learn all of this. And we're learning how to speak Navajo um, in, you know, to say hello. You say yat a it means it is good. And you, when you say goodbye, you say how gone it. And there's always handshaking. Of course, we don't handshake nowadays because of our pandemic, but um, we still send love to one another. And it's so important to belong. And I am doing this so that, again, for my posterity, so that they will be able to define who they are and where they came from. And this is. Uh, Dene Amasana, Navajo Grandma, signing off, and again, Hagone. Thank you for watching.